Hello and welcome to another special mini episode here of The Robust Marketer. Lucky enough to catch one of my friends and mentors, Charles No here. I've known Charles for many years. We've been running in the same sort of affiliate and now e-commerce and Facebook space for a long time. Uh, and we've been doing we've been doing calls. We do calls every every you know couple months or so. We check in, and you've been giving some great advice. It was actually kind of surprised to catch you here. Like, I didn't know you were here. Yeah, I actually didn't know 100%. Yeah, we're in either. Atlanta right now. That's right. Atlanta, the Porsche Experience Center. We're gonna go rip around the, the track after maybe <laughs> a, a few laps. But uh, yeah, I wanted to. I think you know our audience. Most of most of our audience is gonna know you. Uh, okay. You know, you've been in the game for over 10 years now, basically. Uh, getting close to 11. Yeah, and so tell me what your focus is these days. Yep, so I have two main focuses right now. So one focus is really trying to make it, trying to make a lot of money on Facebook these days. So Facebook keeps changing, like uh, I'm kind of getting out of the e-commerce game. So I've been doing that for the past year, but then I'm, you know, moving back to CPA on Facebook, so that's one of my focus. The second focus is we are doing uh, my accelerator, so we're moving away from the live workshop model. Okay. Uh, that's been working well for me for the past few years, but I want to switch it up. You know, I want to do some new challenges, so we're going to start creating some online courses this year. Not going to talk about exactly what it's into, but um, you know, look out for that. Nice. So, what has, what sort of caused you to move uh, away from e-commerce a little bit? Yeah. Well. Uh, to be quite honest, the profit margins have been lowering for me. So I'm not saying that e-commerce is dead. I know a lot of people they are going to start start threads and groups and say, yeah. hey, Charles goes out of e-commerce. Look, it's not dead. It's just um, for me, I, uh, you know, the profit margin started dropping and then I started testing out some CPA stuff again and I just realized what I missed a lot about CPA that it's a lot easier. The operations, the systems are not as intense. Um, and I found the profit margins to be a lot higher. So it's just more rather uh, what I'm comfortable with, the skill sets. So and it's where you came from too, right? Like you started in CPA, that's where you know that's that's where your roots are, and then e-commerce presented itself. And it's like drop shipping is like a proxy for CPA in a way, right? Because it's kind of like you get in there and it's the it's the lowest effort form of, of e-commerce and it, it has a lot of the elements of affiliate in that it's quicker and that you can see I, results quicker. I would say a big reason why I kind of made a switch uh, last year is just it was hot. Like it, it was hot, everyone was doing it. And in a way, if you've been doing something for over 10 years, you kind of want to see, test out the waters, what else is different. So when I saw everyone switching, man, I don't want to be left behind. So in a way, it was kind of, I wouldn't really say it was bright, shiny object syndrome, because I did a lot of research, I tested it out, I had some good results. Uh, so it's all about just understanding the marketplace, testing things out, and seeing what works well for you. Because, uh, you know, maybe I decided to go for a CPA, but someone else, you go to Shopify, you might be able to make like $2 million this month. Like what, test and see what works for you. That's right, or, and there's all sorts of other different directions you can take it within, within e-commerce. You can build a brand, you can, you know, all sorts of different things potentially you can, you can build businesses e around in this time. You know, I really dislike the term e-commerce because it's such a generic term. It's like saying you do internet marketing. Yeah. Like e-commerce, Amazon's e-commerce, but there's also Shopify plus drop shipping. There's also like creating your own brand and growing it. So yeah, I really dislike the term e-commerce because there's so many different avenues you can pursue with it. Yeah. So we were just discussing upstairs uh, the one of the last speakers that we saw, which is sort of an inspirational guy talking about um, a way that you know to keep yourself motivated, a way to uh, sort of remove limitations that you might have on your own success. You're someone who's who's been a, a fairly motivated, very successful person over your, your career. What are some of the things that you do to sort of like maintain that focus of, of wanting to move forward? Yeah, well, man. Okay, how can I limit myself? Because I, I could talk about this for hours. Uh, one thing that's very important is look at what you're doing on a daily basis. Do you get excited about what you're doing? Like, let me give you an example. I, I do not look forward to answering emails. You know, I do not look forward to uploading ads onto Facebook. I don't look forward to them at all. If I had to do that eight hours a day, then I'm just not gonna be motivated. Yeah. So it's very important to just build a team, delegate it out, because whatever you hate doing, there's someone out there who loves doing it. So let them do it. So that's the very first piece of advice. Like, if you find yourself hating what you do every day, then something's wrong. Now, in the beginning, you, you gotta you gotta do it, because yeah. there's no one else. But over time, you're making money, you have to reinvest the resources um, into delegating the stuff you don't like. So yeah, create a lifestyle where whatever you do, you look forward to it. 
Uh, the second one is, you know, physical energy. Like, man, I don't work past 6 p.m. I don't work on the weekends. Now, I know a lot of people out there that hustle 24-7, and I'm a lazy bastard because <laughs> I have these boundaries. But with me personally, it's like, it's like that racetrack out there. You guys ever watch race cars? If you keep driving around like NASCAR, you're gonna, the car's going to burn out. That's why they always take a pit stop in the middle of the race. That's why they don't just keep going around and around yeah. and around. They always take a pit stop, change your tires, give the driver a rest. So with me, I take weekends off. That's my pit stop. You know, and every time there's a, a new quarter, I take two days off. I go to the countryside because I live in New York City, man. There's like no, no grass. It's, it's horrible. So I got to go to the countryside. I just sit there. I just relax, recharge my energy. And my third and final tip uh, this is very important to me is that as you move up through life what motivates you is going to change because when i was coming up in this space when i was 22 years old i'm going to be brutally honest i was motivated by fast cars and hot chicks you know i'm not i'm not proud to admit it but like man i was like man i wanted i wanted a uh a, i wanted porsche One i wanted ferraris here, yeah. yeah i uh you know, there are some girls I liked and they kind of like guys with money. So that was what really motivated me. And, you know, of course, want to help my family and all that, all that stuff. But now, you know, I, ha I have a girlfriend. I've had supercars before. So that stuff doesn't motivate me as much. So if I'm going to stay motivated and take action on a daily basis, I have to find something else that motivates me. So these days, what motivates me is I really enjoy seeing other people succeed, you know, so it's like sharing this advice you know let's say a, a hundred people watch this video and if that helps them then that motivates me and something else that helps me out a lot a hundred come on charles this is gonna be uh, like thousands thousands you, right? it's gonna yeah. go viral it's gonna go viral <laughs> yeah. for sure uh, and something else that really motivates me is just man i just love love learning so it's kind of like i just love learning i love reading i love taking courses you know i still take courses myself it's just learning and applying it, just being like, wow. So that's how it works. So that's what, that's what really drives me. Like, if you told me this, like 22, like, man, yeah, work your ass off so you can help other people. I'd be like, screw that. Like, that's not enough for me to work 16 hours a day. So yeah, your motivation is gonna keep changing. And look, a few years from now, gonna have kids, hopefully. That changes a lot. That's gonna change a lot of things. And my motivation is gonna change. Yeah. So it's just, you always have to be attuned with what motivates you. It's really cool because you're, well, it's, and you're, you're as you as you mature too, like because you you know you you know that you want kids as as part of one of the things that you're you're sort of put on you know boys only boy okay boys only yes. good luck with that, <laughs> uh, but like you know y but you're you're building towards that as well like even the boundaries that you've put in place already with your weekends and your evenings like that's going to be essential for being a father right it's like, like training training wheels yeah that's right you got it what do you got a gecko do you got a dog cat. I have a cat and a dog, yeah. Nice, okay, good. That's, that's definitely kids' training wheels for sure. Yep. But it does, your perspective changes when you have that kid, when you, when you realize you're, it, you know, your supercar becomes less of a, of a thrill and more of like, oh, well, that's actually kind of reckless for me potentially when I've got a kid I've got to worry about, or I don't know, not necessarily. Yeah. I'd take a supercar, who am I kidding? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't. I've already gone through my midlife crisis, so. <laughs> nice. So I wanted to ask you specifically, like what you said, so like in your day, you say you, you get rid of the things that you don't like. What are some of the things that you gravitate towards that you still really like doing in your business? I love planning and strate strategic thinking. So strategic thinking, you know, as an affiliate, you spend a lot of time in your business. You are uploading ads, you are, spy tools, you are split testing, and all that's great, it's essential. But you have to take some time out. Instead of working in your business, you have to work on your business. So what I like to do is twice a week, I like to spend 45 minutes doing what I call thinking time sessions. So these thinking time sessions, get a pencil and paper, and I just have one high value question. So, uh, you know, in affiliate marketing, this could be like, uh, I just did one. Um, how is GDRP going to affect my affiliate marketing campaigns? Mm -hmm. So I sat down there, I did some research, and I just thought, like, how will this affect things? Another thing, another great question is, for your biggest campaign right now, what could call, what are you doing right now that could cause a lawsuit? It's always good to check in on. You know, are you using 
um, <laughs> endorsements that are not really real? Are you using fake comments? Are you getting way too aggressive? But, but you have to think about this stuff. These are uncomfortable questions, but mm. you have to think about them so you can prevent bad stuff from happening in the future. Uh, another another um, thinking time question is, okay, I'm planning on selling courses in the future. So, and there are a lot of other people that sell courses. So I ask myself, if people are gonna buy courses from this person, why would they buy a course from this person instead of me? So it's, you know, I think, and I'm really honest with myself, so that, hey, if they're buying a course from them because they have a money back guarantee and I don't, well, maybe I should add in a money back guarantee. Yeah. But if you're spending all day just split testing and spying tools and stuff, you're not looking at the strategy. So with me, I love thinking, I love planning, I love strategy. Um, I think of even just when you and I went back and forth on the, some of the things that we're planning, and you wrote back this, this long e email just nailing, okay, here are the issues you might have, this, 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 this. Like, it really showed that like, level of strategic thinking that you took. You probably took 25 minutes to write that email at least. It, 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 took, an, it took an hour, It took Eric. an hour, and I really <laughs> appreciate it. Like, uh, and, and I think it's something that, I, that I'm trying to do more and more as well because it is so easy to get caught up in the day-to-day. -day. Well, it's, it's, just the way, it's just the way my mind works. Like, whenever I, I want to do something, I think about what are the roadblocks or the issues that will prevent this goal from happening. So if I'm about to catch a flight later, you know, I haven't missed a flight in five years. Well That's done. because, well, I missed a flight once and I, I <laughs> dealt with the pain from that. Yeah. But I sit down and I think, what could possibly go wrong? Well, the security line could yeah. be like blah, blah, blah. Or I could leave my laptop or something at home or the traffic could be bad. So I account for all these things. I'm like, okay, now I have a checklist where I got to get my okay, here's my wallet, here's my cell phone. So you just have to look at these things because an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. That's, that sounds like a, a, a proverb, I, I enjoy it. It is a proverb, yeah. So wh here's a question, you, you know, you, you're, you're a very polished individual, you're a very successful individual, but I, there's gotta be things you still struggle with. What yeah. are some things that you sort of struggle with on a daily basis? I know our audience loves to hear, you know, of our, these high level professionals, because everyone struggles. Yeah. Um, a few struggles I have right now is the first one for me is probably uh, perfectionism. So I deal a lot with perfectionism. Like, for example, uh, a lot of people have asked me why have I never released an online course. Mm. And the truth is, is perfectionism. Like, I'm worried about releasing something and it's not good enough because I spend a lot of time uh, building up my reputation. I care a lot about my reputation, delivering quality, making sure people are happy. So there's been a lot of great ideas that I haven't pursued yet because I have all these really high standards. So I know this, I am working towards this, but it is something that uh, I do struggle with a lot. Uh, the second one is, you know, whenever I have a great idea, I'm probably not taking action as fast as I can because uh, the downfall of being a strategic thinker is you can overanalyze, you can overplan things. Yeah. So with me, it's like, hey, let's do this. I will sit down. I'm like, oh, I start thinking, and I actually start start uh, overthinking. Uh, and then the third one, uh, third thing I'm struggling with is probably thinking bigger. So I make a very, I have a very comfortable lifestyle now. So I teach affiliate marketing. I run some campaigns. I make pretty good money. Uh, but I know there's a next level, yeah. you know, I know there's a next level like I've never made uh, eight figures in a year You know, and I, I have all these friends who are more successful than me and they're like Charles Dude, you are smarter than me. Like you have what it takes to get that level, but it's your mindset that's holding you back um, So for me, it's like I'm trying to break through that next level and I think a big part of it is just because I have attachment to my current lifestyle but I do like my life, it's very comfortable. So for me to, and it's pretty much almost, you know, there's no such thing as guaranteed money, but yeah. it's, you know, pretty, pretty good money. So for me to go to the next level, it's substantial risk. I have to like stop doing a lot of stuff that I'm doing to take that giant leap. So those are some of the things that I'm struggling with. And I'm, I'm sharing with uh, this with you guys, because I know a lot of people, they see me, I'm so systematic, I've been doing this for so long. Um, and it can be a little intimidating, but dude, I'm just a normal guy, just like you guys are. Like I have, I deal with the same shit that everyone else deals with. 
Do you ever deal with imposter syndrome? This is something I th I've been ta talking about with a lot of my guests, actually. It's something I face, and especially in the teaching space. You know, you, yeah. you, you, even though you help a lot of people, you create content that people love, there's, it's, you know, e every time I get a message from people being like, oh, that really helped me, or I really like that, like, it's great to hear that. Yeah. And you, you kind of need to hear it again and again, because it's easy to forget that, that, you, that there are, that the level of expertise you might have. Is it something you've ever dealt with? Yeah, yeah, a lot. So imposter syndrome means uh, you, so it's very common. I think there's a statistic that 70% of people have imposter syndrome to some At degree. Least, yeah. So imposter syndrome means you're in a position and you feel like you're a fake, you're an imposter. Um, it fits with the fake it till you make it thing, I think, exactly. right? And it's like, but you never, you don't, not many people really feel like they've made it. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's always that next level. Sure, sure. So with me, I'm known as like, you know, a top guy in affiliate marketing, like people refer to me like the encyclopedia of affiliate marketing. So I'll have some guys that are like Charles Mann, blah, 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 blah. And this guy is making like $50,000 a day in profit running campaigns asking me for advice. Now I've done that before, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not, you know, exactly hitting that consistently on a normal level. So it's like, man, sometimes people ask me for advice where they're making more money than me and they're asking me for advice. And I'm like, you know, I do the best I can, yeah. but a lot of times it's like, dude, what they're doing is right. They just got to keep doing it. And I kind of feel like, well, what they needed from me is just because they respect me, they needed me to just give them a pat on the ass to let them know that they're in the right direction. But, you know, in my regards, because people have such high respect for me, they think like I'm fucking perfect. Like they think I meditate every single morning. I do my morning routine every single morning. Like, dude, I didn't meditate this morning. Yeah. You know, I'm not perfect. I tried last night. I failed. But... Uh, let's get, we'll give a daily affirmation to the audience. You're good enough, you're smart enough, and God darn it, people like you. So I think, uh, I think our audience will, will love that. And I want to thank you for your time today, Charles. We're going to go have a dinner at uh, Chago de Fao. Fogo de Chao. Fogo de Chao, not Chago de Fao. I said that's the second time I've said that. But anyways, thanks a lot. And uh, I look forward to, you know, hanging out with you again. All right, later, guys. Cheers. Thanks. So I'm not at dinner tonight. Okay.